seven questions Brits always ask me about America and its people. Curious to see what we got in this video. Before we do get into this, appreciate if you guys can hit subscribe button. Let's check this video out, man. I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos questions. pertains to questions. Specifically, questions that British people ask me about the United States okay. and its people. I'm Lawrence. I'm curious to see if any of these questions are ones that I thought of before and not been answered. Lawrence Brown, and this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If I... you've been paying attention, you may remember that last week I did the exact reverse of this video when I looked at seven questions that Americans always ask okay. me about Britain and its people. And as somebody who's lived in the United States now for ages, I do indeed get a lot of questions from people back home. Such oh, as, Ooh, Lawrence, do you think you'll ever develop an American accent? Or, bro, for, he's been there for like, is it over 10 years now? He's been in America for a while. I'm surprised he ain't got an American accent already. Oh, why is Arkansas pronounced Arkansas, not Arkansas? I did a YouTube short about it already. Oh, okay. And so I'm drawing on all of my expertise of living in the United States to answer questions like these today, so that maybe all of the I... British friends and family members that are asking these questions finally Copy shut me. the f up. That said, I really like people, and since we're on our way to a million subscribers, if Damn. you're not yet one of them, do that now. Yo, his link will be in description. In the meantime, here are seven of the most common questions that I get asked by British people about America and Americans. Number one. Why do Americans call their sport foot? Okay. Number one, why do Americans call their sport okay. football when they don't use their feet? Well, right. firstly, that's not entirely true. I mean, I think we've all seen it where a player takes the ball. I actually know the answer to this. And is I think it's because like, we called it. Oh, no, I'm thinking of soccer. You guys call soccer because we call soccer soccer, right? And then we changed it. Puts it down, kicks it in slow motion. He's that might just be in the movies. And everybody goes crazy. So it must be an important part of the sport. Right. Secondly, I did some Googling and I found out that it's called football because of the sports from which it's derived. See, back in the 19th century, Britain was developing a series of ball games. One okay. of them famously was soccer or to give it its full name, association football. Right, and this yeah. was called association football because they had to differentiate it from something else called rugby football. Rugby football did indeed go by the name of rugby. Oh, I didn't know rugby was actually called rugby football be football and in fact sometimes does to this day despite the fact that they too don't use their feet unless they're kicking it over a giant edge right. or down the field or maybe some other ways and american style football basically took its cues from rugby football and the name stuck oh okay oh i actually i actually never knew that rugby was called rugby football bro it should be called something like handball bro <laughs> rugby handball why football why is america bread so sweet oh you know what I can't imagine bread being so sweet, but I actually would like to try it. All right, this question I get a lot. Why is American bread so sweet? And we have to make a bit of a distinction here because the bread that we're talking about is the kind of store-bought bread that you get in supermarkets right. that are used for sandwiches. And it's true. One of my earliest experiences in this country was raiding my mother-in-law's bread bin when I was hungry late at night. And Yo, in my stream, if you guys are joining up the streams, man, you're missing out. Twitch.tv forward slash LFMG. You guys show me pictures of food and stuff all the time. I realize that a lot of you guys have, like, sugar on toast. Is it called a French toast or is it just called a sugar toast? I can't remember. <laughs> but I was so like, I was like, what? So like, you just get the toast, bro. You just pour a load of sugar on it. I was thinking like, what? Because we never do that, bro. I've never even thought to do that. I don't know how it'd be. I'm going to have to try it one day. And I was really excited because as everybody knows, there's like nothing it, to be better fair. than bread I do like sweet at things. midnight. Is that was just me? No, was because that? everybody. But it was my mother-in-law's bread bin when I was hungry late at night. And I was really excited because, as everybody knows, there's nothing better than bread and butter at midnight. Okay. Is that that's just me? Bread and butter's right. nice. But it no, was like really it. sweet. It was almost like I was having a late-night dessert. Really? Basically, this additional sweetness on American bread comes down to one word. Added sugar. That's two words. And it's true. <laughs> as somebody who gave up added sugar a couple of years ago, I was shocked to find just how much added sugar was found in American bread. Oh, two grams really? of added sugar, which is 4%. Three grams of added sugar, 6%. Now, there's a couple of things to add here okay. beyond sugar. Number one, the addition of added sugar is supposedly intentional in order to prolong the life of the bread. And pound for pound, I have found that American okay. bread takes a bit longer to turn green. I was a student in England. Wait, out of curiosity, how long does it take in America for bread to go out of date normally in the uk at most it's honestly i get bread 
And it always goes out of date within like three, four, five days. I'm not even going to lie, bro. Three to five days it goes out of date. And so I've got a lot of experience in this field. But the other thing to point out is not all American bread Maybe is Maybe a week if Since you look Since giving it. up added sugar, I've mostly turned to sourdough or rye. Some of which have zero added sugar, okay. which tastes great with some strawberry jam, which I've just realized has added sugar. Are you scared of all the gun? Are we? He's a citizen, so he can own a gun, right? I w yeah, I wonder, um, I wonder what he's going to say about this. Or if he, even if he owns a gun. Number three, are you scared of all the guns? And I would say not all of them. I used to love the Super Soaker 5000. <laughs> and in fact, it's a weird one, this, because while guns are definitely used to kill more people in right. America than they are in Britain, I don't particularly live in fear of them because number one, I'm an optimist. Some would say a blind optimist. And number two, so long as you stay in the right part okay. of town and or don't become a member of a gang, there's a good chance that you can go 16 years living in America without seeing gun violence firsthand. Yeah, I, I was actually shocked about that when i first learned that but like a lot of you guys in my streams again um this is where we just have live conversations man it's really good i'm telling you you need to check it out but a lot of you guys have told me like a lot of, I, I was surprised to know that a lot of you guys haven't even really seen guns like you rarely see them and yeah people that are in america they think that you guys just see them all the time now, that's not to say, of course, that America hasn't had many, 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 many well-documented mass shooting events. Right. And these, of course, horrific as they are, paint a picture that there are shootings on every corner oh, of every yeah. city at Media. every second of every day. I don't want you to come Blows here with that up. false impression because otherwise you won't ever leave your hotel. And I can hear my Uncle Toby right now. But Lawrence, there are 30,000 gun-related deaths in America every year. Right. And that is a big number. But you have to keep in mind that, unfortunately, over half of those are suicides. But even though this is a very serious subject, I wanted oh. to answer it. Because while there clearly are people in this country who will pick up a gun and do the unthinkable, right. the chances of dying in this way during a given year, never mind a two-week visit, are approximately 1 in 32,000. So don't worry too much and just be vigilant. Okay. okay, can we get back to the comedy stuff now? Do Americans think you know the queen? <laughs> You know what? I've had some people actually ask me, like, yo, have I ever met the Queen? No, I haven't met the Queen. <laughs> oh, well, rip the Queen. King now. But you know what I mean, bro. Like, no, we don't... We Yeah, it's not just easy for us because we're in the UK to go meet the royal family, mate. Thanks. The next question. Oh, get this all the time. Do Americans think you know the Queen? <laughs> no, because she's dead. But also, despite right. this being a kind of stereotype of Americans, I've received this question or a question along these lines. Why is she not moving? Bro, why? Like, how is she this still? It's precisely once. I was in a training class. Hold on. Is this a picture? I've received this question or a question along these lines. No, it's a video, bro. It's precisely... <gasps> It's one of those wax things, isn't it? Yeah, let's just move on from this. Precisely once. I was in a training class back when I worked in a call centre, and in those call centre training classes, you get a big mishmash of many different types of people. And I was put with this one fellow who was weirdly obsessed with my accent, who kept bombarding me with questions, one of which was, why do you call soccer football? Right. Happens in reverse. And his question was something along the lines of, did you used to live near the Queen? And even though I don't think he meant it in this way, I suppose, relatively speaking, I did, because I lived in London. Okay. She lived in London. We were like buddies. But I got the sense that he meant, did you live in the same apartment complex? And the thought <laughs> yeah. of the queen paying rent is quite laughable because she's dead. Well, <laughs> well, even if she wasn't, she won't be paying rent. Why is it called the world? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. I've heard of this. You guys call the World Series for the baseball, right? But only you participate. But I was told that Canada does as well. So technically, yeah, Canada and America is just part of the world. Why is it called the World Series yeah, the when world. only Americans play? And once again, that is completely and utterly a little bit false. Because it's oh. not just American teams. There's Canada? a Canadian one as well. Oh, right, yeah. Secondly, I need to dispel a myth. For the longest time, it was believed that the baseball competition's name came from the fact that they were sponsored by the New York World Telegram newspaper. The assertion okay. being that they took the word world, try saying that after four whiskeys, and named it that with utterly no pretension of being a global competition. But that theory has since been debunked. Instead, the real origin of the name is this. In 1903, the owner of the Pittsburgh Pirates challenged his counterpart at the Boston Red Sox to what he dubbed a 
World Championship Series. Because at the time, right. the Pirates were the best team in the National League and the Red Sox were the best team in the American League. And why the National League and the American League don't mean the same thing, I, I'll never know. But it seems like he used it ironically and it sort of just stuck it just and then stuck? evolved into the World Series. There is, of course, a baseball competition that does include different countries and that is the World Baseball Classic, which is sort of like a dime store version of the FIFA World Cup, but with baseball. Why do Americans tell you their home state before their home country? Uh, this is interesting. Yeah, this is interesting. Because I notice this a lot. Like, you guys will be popping in, saying hello to me on Twitch and stuff. And when you say hello, you say, hi, I'm from, and then you say your state. You say your state. Why do Always. American tourists in Britain tell you the state they're from before they name it's, their country? It's probably because the state is as big as, like, countries, bro. So, like, instead of saying, like, hi, I'm Lewis from Europe, I'm like, hi, I'm Lewis from England, yeah? Where England is the same size as the state. Uh, yeah, maybe, I don't know. And I, too, have experience with this because when I met my American wife over in England, my first words to her were, hi, I'm Lawrence. I was named after the actor Lawrence Olivier. Isn't that impressive? But my second words to her were, where are you from? To which she answered, okay. Indiana. And I've never asked her about that. Maybe she said Indiana because I assumed from her accent that she was from the United States. But actually, when I asked her it, I remember thinking, well, you could be Canadian. I could end up looking like a right numpty if I assume your <laughs> Americanness. But equally, for those of us who have a bit of geographical now, so I know from the answer Indiana that she is from the United States. The problem right. is not everybody in Britain knows all of the 50 that states. That is true. That is true. Not everybody in America does come to that. So I suppose in some... Yeah, you know what? Even after watching all these videos, um, off the top of my... Actually... Yeah, I might get a couple off. But I don't know. I feel like I'd be able to... Like, if somebody said they're from a state, I'd be able to recognize it's from America now. But before before these videos? Nah. <laughs> there would be so many states I'd be like, uh, yeah, that would... Yeah, I wouldn't even know they're American. In some ways, it is kind of weird. But then on the other hand, I think Americans do carry a little bit of pride in their roots, as in where they came from, not their hair. Right. Although in my wife's case, both. And so maybe it's a manifestation of that. It's sort of like when Americans go around wearing their college jumpers slash sweaters. Because I think it might be to Americans a status symbol. I've okay. no idea actually why they do that. Sorry, I've just made most of that up. Let me know in the comments why you do it, if you do. Actually, there's a decent chance that you don't. Because of this. Why don't most Americans have a passport? Okay. Why don't right. many Americans own passports? Now, my logic when I think about this, right, is the fact that, like, America's, like, the size of Europe. Most people in England, UK, that I know of, have not been outside of Europe. That's like America not being outside America. And I was speaking to you guys, and you guys were saying, like, it's so expensive to leave America. And go like across the world because it's so far away you know what i'm saying and america's so big so well as i said in a video that i did all about this a few years ago the answer is multifaceted. Firstly, while only 42% of Americans own a passport compared to 86% of Brits, right. significantly more Americans these days do own a passport than they did 30 years ago, which was approximately when I first started hearing about this stereotype. And Wait, do you need a passport to go from a place in America to America? Do you still have to check into the airport with a passport? Probably not, right? I don't know. Like, if I was going from a place in the UK to the UK, like, you you can go from the bottom to the top, I would probably still take my passport even though I don't need it. I don't know. I actually don't know. And secondly, there's this perception that America is so huge and packed with variety Massive. that you could just do all of your traveling here. And while that isn't necessarily an idea that I subscribe to, it is one that many Americans do. And because right. arguably way more Americans than Brits have family members and friends that live a thousand miles away in the same country. Yo, I'm curious. Let me know in the comments if you're American. Well, I know most of you are American. But let me know in the comments if you've ever been outside of America. And if so, where? Sometimes, in order to see them, that necessitates that they take a holiday within the country. But it's not cheap. 
You know, domestic right. flights can get up to a thousand dollars, and so that would be one of the other reasons that a lot of Damn. Americans don't travel internationally is they simply can't afford it. And I know what you're thinking, yeah, 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 Lawrence, but isn't it also down to a lack of curiosity on the part of Americans? And I think it would be hard to argue that there isn't an element of that, but that just comes down to what they're exposed to. If you compare the news cycles of both Britain and America, the BBC reports on countries from all over the world, even right. countries that don't have oil. How mad is that? <laughs> Whereas when America provides international reports, it's usually Usually on countries that they have a vested interest in due to their foreign policy. So I think America just isn't exposed to other Was countries Star as much. Wars? And this is heightened, of course, by the fact yeah. that they are bordered only by Mexico and Canada. If you go over to Britain, we're bordered by... No one the sea, but then the rest of Europe with all of the countries that come with that. Now, that's not to say that no right, Americans okay. travel abroad, otherwise I wouldn't have met my wife and or moved to the United States and started this very channel. So I'm glad she did. <laughs> Final words. Well, if I've learned anything that today, it's that on though. YouTube, you can talk about guns and bread in the same <laughs> video. But I've also learned that I didn't share housing facilities with the Queen. Let me know in the comments. What right, you... very, very interesting. I'm curious to see what you guys have to say about that in the comments to see, like, what kind of places you guys have been to and whatnot. If you guys did enjoy this, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. Live every single day on Twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.